heart attack, fast fatal heart impact, past painful scars, in fact, I blast tasteful laws and past, I back up my actions, fact, don't ask, grab reactions, jack, attack with every word, then act with class, as they hear me snap, I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise, now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce, I ain't lost, I'm finally loose, pick a new silver excuse, I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used, everybody wants a piece now, y'all can rest in peace now, you're dead to me, so peace out, remember you're discreet now, get ready for the Alrighty. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Kiru Show here. And now, let us begin. Whenever we last left off, we had Izuka Midoriya. Him and Momo, they, have been on Earth, along with Mina. Midoriya meeting an old friend of his from preschool. And actually running in with All Might's. Having a run in with All Might's. Now, after All Might did talk about the Dragon Balls and wanted to speak to Inko about them, Midoriya basically had to explain what they were. Momo absolutely furious that Midoriya has never brought up these things before. However, whenever they did get back to the lookout, he began to explain it better along with Kami. Now, as they are flying, Midoriya is explaining that they can only grant one wish per year. Now, as they do land, the conversation does continue. Momo screaming that thousands have died because of this war, if not millions, possibly billions. Well, Kami does actually go on stating. That the Dragon Balls, they aren't so cut and dry. They do have their limits. In fact, he believes that the current way their war is going, the Dragon Balls may not be able to stop it. They can still try, however. Now, Midoriya does actually ask Kami a question. Does he believe that it would be possible to... Stop the war at his current power level. Now, Kami, quite simply, states he does not believe so. Now, this is a young man Kami, you could say. Not like an old man Kami. I do want to throw that out there. Him telling Midoriya that not the current rate. Now, he then does at least hand over a Dragon Ball to Midoriya, saying that they do, however, already have one to get started with. Scouring the Earth will take weeks, if not possibly even a month or two. And they don't really have the amount of time to waste on that little adventure. Now, Midoriya does actually bring up the idea to contact his parents and see how they are going. Kami trying to contact King Kai, and King Kai looking on the other side of the universe. Now, somewhere within the North Squadrant, we will cut to Inko and Hisashi. Now, both these two, at this current time, have become battle-hardened warriors. As Asashi, he's throwing around as much weight and force as possible. Him smashing his arms backwards and voids across many different opponents' faces. Along with powering up to Kaioken, times 40, and blasting multiple opponents away. Before, he does turn around and immediately just, with both of his hands, spins around and begins to try and cut through opponents. Now. These two are surrounded by Timebreaker Saiyans. And the two just keep powering up more and more. Before they look at each other. And they both immediately turn and bring up their hands. As soon as both of their hands do collide, both of them do begin to do a key explosion. Letting all their power out at once. Now, King Kai does watch the current battle. That sent plenty of timebreakers away from them. Now, Hasashi 
does actually fall in combat. Him smashing into the ground and barely being conscious as Kaio Ken has left his body heavily strained. Now, Enko does actually pay attention to that, ordering many of her forces to begin to withdraw and to make sure that they can get the injured out of there. As she does throw up her hands into a familiar stance. Now, she then begins to order all of her men to give her as much power as they can. Now, Supreme, or not Supreme Kai, King Kai does begin to watch the battle, watching as Inko creates a ginormous spirit bomb, Hisashi donating his own energy. As, whenever a Saiyan does actually come up to her and try and attack her, she's able to quickly bring a leg up and kick them right in the family jewels, using her other leg and directly smashing them straight through their chest and breaking their ribcage. Now, she then does have the spear bomb come down to her hands, as she begins to absorb the energy. As soon as she does do this, her, sky, her power level skyrockets to unfathomable, le unfathomable levels. As she then powers up the Kaioken and immediately just rushes in, blitzing and slaughtering her current opponents. Now, as soon as Inko does do that, she charges up a final blast, and all of the energy she has stored in her body currently just goes blasting out in the direction into space, her missing the planet. Now, she then does actually fall over onto her knees and actually does hunch over, holding onto her left arm as she's heavily injured, panting and heaving and waiting for any orders from her men. Now, they are able to say that the situation is currently cleared, and Inko is at least happy about that, Hisashi and her being put into healing chambers. Now, with that being said, both of these two do actually go into a telepathic communication with King Kai. King Kai explaining the current, well, thing, asking them about the war. Both these two talking about how they're actually very close to ending it. However, these Saiyans, they have been quite troublesome. If they can defeat the commander at the next base, they believe that they can crush this evil Saiyan's resistance. Now, with that being said, King Kai does actually inform Midoriya that his parents are doing okay. In fact, they've actually just fought a very intense battle. Now, Midoriya is quite surprised about that. And Momo is surprised hearing about the war almost being at an end. Now, with that being said, Mina is still confused as to what is going on. However, there is one thing Momo does ask Midoriya. Whenever he, well, wished for something, correct? Hmm? Uh, what do you mean? You wished for something, right? Yeah, I did. Well, what did you wish for? Whenever we were back on Sadala, and you stuck around. I didn't think you had a tail. Oh crap. So, you're from Earth. And yet you're a Saiyan. I want to give you the benefit of the doubt, but can you just tell me? Did you... Midoriya, taking a deep breath in before letting out a sigh. Fine. Yes, I did. Why? Why would you become one of us? <sighs> Midoriya just looking straight at her, dead in the eyes as he powers up. His key 
it begins to skyrocket heavily. As Midoriya simply just states that a Saiyan, they are a born warrior. They are fighters, strong, capable, and superior. Physically, and he wants to say mentally. Now, Midoriya boasts that the Saiyans, their combat potential, and the way they work. He, whenever he goes to the age of 40, or possibly even 50, he'll begin to decline, and he does not want that. He wished to become a Saiyan because he wants to fight. If he is to become the God of Destruction, if he is a human or a mortal, he does not know what would happen. He doesn't want to spend that time as an old man. Now, he also does begin to boast that. He also does feel pride with the way he is. And Momo, she actually does begin to blush and smirk a little bit. And she says that Midoriya, he doesn't seem like a cheap imitation. Hmm? Huh? Your blood boils when you fight. You get excited whenever you're around strong people and battle. Isn't that right? Now, Midoriya confirms everything Momo is currently saying. As... Momo then states that Midoriya, he has Saiyan pride. The pride he feels is not fake. It is what every warrior has, and it's what keeps his Saiyan alive. So, focus on that and maintain it. Now, with that being said, she's not as angry about the Dragon Balls anymore. In fact, Midoriya talking about what it's like to be a Saiyan got her a bit more pumped up. And the two do go into the hyperbolic time chamber after the time dilation is muted. Now, as soon as Mina does actually see this magic room, she does begin to ask questions about it. Hmm? Ah, yes, the hyperbolic time chamber. Uh, what is this? Well, Gravity is at times 10, and if you want to, using magic, you can mute the time dilation. Hmm, interesting. Um, do they get any benefit from being in there? Not anymore. But I do believe that they do not care. Hmm, well, if I mean, I mean, if you would allow me to, I might be able to... Help. Hmm? Help how? Well, I think I can increase it. Increase what? The, the gravity inside? Hmm. Well then, if you believe that you are up to the task, however, do not mess with it when they are in there. In fact, I do believe that we do have your own training to do, correct? Mina surprised as Kami gets her started on some workouts. Now, Midoriya and Momo are currently fighting within the hyperbolic time chamber. And this battle does eventually end in a almost stalemate. Without using the Kaioken, both these two are almost on par with each other. As they do continue to fight back and forth. Now, Momo does still have that thought in the back of her mind. If she cannot stop the war, she might be able to bring back her mother. And she does want to at least do that. Bring back everyone who has died against the, against the resistance. Everyone who lost their lives that day wrongfully. Now. With all of that being said... There's also another thing she does have in the back of her mind. A question she does want answers to. The Super Saiyan God. If he is really her ancestor, and a Super Saiyan does exist, exactly what do you have to do to become one? How does one turn Super Saiyan? 
now. Momo is actually quite intrigued by this question. As she does believe she can hold off on that one. She can bring back all the people who died, then focus on her own needs. That is what she must do as the leader. Focus on more people. Benefiting them and not just herself. Now, with that being said, Momo does set out in the middle of the night to go collect the Dragon Balls. And Mina actually does see her. As soon as she left, she was stopped by Vados. Momo trying to bring up her hands and tell Vados that she cannot stop her. Hmm? Oh no, no, I wasn't going to stop you. Huh? In fact, I was going to encourage you. If you want to grant your own wish, collect them. Uh, okay. But what about Midoriya? Oh, I'm sure Midoriya would understand. Besides, it's not like he was going to use them. Uh, okay. No. Nah. With all of that, cut back to Mina. Her running into Midoriya's room, as she actually does see him, laying on the floor in a sleeping bag. Her running over and waking him up. As Midoriya does sit up, she's actually quite shocked. Whenever she does see Midoriya, asking him if he's awake. Hmm? What do you want, Mina? It's Momo. She, she left. She's looking for the Dragon Balls. Midoriya immediately awakened and alert. As he actually does grab his shirt beside him and go to throw it on. Now, as soon as he does throw on his shirt, he brings his fingers up and immediately just pops. Mina, confused. As Midoriya, he directly appears in front of Momo. Her immediately going to stop in midair. Zidoria actually does grab her by her arm and ask her exactly what she thinks she's doing. I'm collecting the Dragon Balls. Why? What are you going to wish for? It's none of your concern. Hmm. This is why I didn't want you to know what they were. Listen, I won't let you. I won't let you wish for anything bad. Let alone word it wrong. What? I'm just trying to bring back everyone who died on my planet. Huh. <sighs> Alright. Huh? Alright. Fine. Wish them back now. However, I suggest we might want to wait until after the war is over. That way in case any else anyone else does die. They are able to be brought back. Wouldn't that be the smarter idea? Uh, um, I guess, but we can at least... No, we can't. Why? If we take all the Dragon Balls and put them together, the magic dragon pops out. It doesn't need a, it doesn't need a code phrase. And if you summon it now, and we don't need a wish granted, then you won't be able to access them for another year. Damn it. Momo begins to scream as tears begin to strum down her face. Midoriya, he does actually feel a little bit bad about that. However, he does know that Momo did need to at least hear it. Now, he does bring his hand up and tell Momo that it's alright. A lot of people have lost a lot of things, and as soon as the war is over, as soon as his hand has touched Momo's shoulder, she throws herself forward into Midori's chest. And she just begins to cry. Now, Midoriya, as the two float there in midair, does tell her to just let it all out. It's alright. Now, Momo 
she's had a lot of things pent up. A lot of emotions and a lot of things she has not been able to share with anyone. And she's at least finally had a breaking point. Being able to cry. There are all those emotions she's always been taught never to show. And she does feel better. She feels like the world hasn't ended. And the two do eventually head back to the lookout. And actually get some damn sleep. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. Have an amazing night. Catch you guys in the next part.